Welcome in, everybody. Uh, what is this, Tuesday or Wednesday morning, uh, October 16th? I really have no idea. All my days run together. I'm getting ready to start kicking over to box checkers and NFL, but I wanted to at least get you this quick NHL video. For those of you that are following me for hockey, I appreciate it. As always, hit the like and subscribe button down there at the bottom. We're going to be shifting this account probably over towards the DFS Army YouTube account as time goes forward. So please start gravitating over that direction if you haven't already. I need to figure out how to trans in the transition this stuff uh, over there so that we're all under the same umbrella and the same brand. The coupon codes always work. You can use DFS Army as a coupon code. You can use CHOP, CHOP as a coupon code. Both of them trigger 20% off on a full VIP membership over there. But being that they sponsor me, I do what they tell me, and they're telling me to move over that direction, so that's what I'm going to start doing. I just don't want to leave all of you guys behind. Uh, always follow me out over here on Twitter, and we can get rolling into today's slate. I want to show you the process that I'm using right now because I'm getting a lot of questions about how I develop some of these numbers and some of these things that I do. Uh, I like to combine metrics that will equalize the field and compare apples to apples. And very, very simple, logical ways to do this, but kind of like a comedian talking about uh, funny situations, oftentimes you don't think about them on your own until you hear somebody do it and go, oh my god, it's so simple, why am I not doing it? Every once in a while I have one of those epiphanies, and I've had a couple of them with uh, statistics and metrics here in DFS Sports. They tend to work, they translate uh, fairly well, because honestly it makes sense. I go to this uh, naturalstattrick.com, it's a free site, and I come over here and I kick these numbers down immediately to 2019-2020, I go to a regular season, I submit, I actually open up all filters now that we're getting more than five games out of some of these guys. I could still be using these samples if I wanted to, but I can also go to more filters and I can go to, you know, last 10 games, full season, I can go to custom, I can do some stuff there. I can also sift by the date and say the starting date is about, you know, Friday the 4th and the ending date is, say, today. And then I can submit that again, and hopefully these numbers change a little bit. And there's a lot of fours and fives, which gets me onto my five-game sample. New York's not on the slate today anyway, so I don't really care about them. I write down the teams off to the side, and you'll see me do that over here on this sheet. But where am I getting this number right here? It's really easy. Anybody can do it. I've got the teams right now, Colorado, Pittsburgh, Toronto, Washington, whatever. Let's use Colorado and Pittsburgh. I come back over here, I sort by goals four, which means I need to scroll over, over, over. You could use shots, you could use anything you wanted to. I'm just a results guy. So I go goals four, bring the top to the top. Pittsburgh, 4.84, 2.6 against, right? Here was my other one, Colorado, 4.19 or 4.2, 4, 2.2 against, rounded to the nearest tenth, right? So now, all I'm going to do is take the Pittsburgh Penguins goals four, 4.8, add it to the Colorado Avalanche goals against, 2.2. 4.8, 2.2 is 7.0. Remove the decimal point, you get a 70. 4.2 plus 2.6 gives me uh, 6.8 or 68. 68, 70. There's your number. Really simple. I do it for every team on every slate because what it does, it starts to equalize the field and show me mid-60s to around 70 is a good environment for scoring. Did it work last night for Carolina? No. Are they in a good environment again tonight? Yes. Are they on a road back-to-back -back way out west? Yes. Might they be tired? Yes. If you want to use that as part of your narrative, man, go for it. I'm just telling you what the paper shows. That's all I focus on. I'm going to have good nights. I'm going to have bad nights just like you. I mean, I put out whatever it was. Uh, I don't know how many dollars I spent last night, but I got half of it back. It was a crushing night for me, even though I was on Tampa Bay and Toronto and Carolina and Vegas and Nashville and whatever else. I just, the stacks hit pretty good. The one-offs around them really didn't. And I got demolished in some tournaments. I had as usual, probably about 20% of my lineups creep through to the cash line. The problem with that was I didn't have many go deep, and that's where you get paid is when you go deep. But if I'm playing dimes, quarters, um, you know, even dollar entry stuff at 20 max and putting it in two, three, four times for 50, 60, 70, 80 lineups or more, then all I really need is a couple of deep lineups to make my night. And make my last night, and the night before that, and the night before that, and the night before that. That's all it really takes. So I can sit and live indefinitely with my bankroll on getting getting back half. Now it gets frustrating. You expect to do better. But shit happens, and it's hockey. 
I'll eventually have big nights, and it'll make up for all of the losing. We'll go on a hot streak. Not worried about it. Your top five offenses by the matchup score, Toronto, 76, and then a little bit of a gap between Pittsburgh, Washington, Carolina, and Colorado. Again, do what you want with Carolina. Over 3.4 implied team totals, interesting, according to Vegas right now. Uh, San Jose is the only team, and they're at 3.40. These that are close are like 3.33. It's Pittsburgh and Washington. Notice Pittsburgh and Washington are on the list, but notice that San Jose is not. So I included San Jose in my stacks. So let's run these five stacks and let's run these six. I'll give them to you. This is where you should be. Now, if you want to run some kind of GPP squirrely narrative that the Dallas and Columbus game shoots out at a 55 and a 63, hey, you could be right in any given night. Like I say, if I have one putt with Tiger Woods from 50 feet, I can hit the putt and he can miss. There's a lot of luck involved there. But over the long term, I'm sticking with the green guys. So I'm not interested in Carolina or, or Columbus or Dallas or uh, Philly or even Edmonton tonight or whatever. I'm just I'm not saying they won't score goals. I'm saying that if I ran the slate 100 times, I don't believe they're going to score as often as these other teams are. So I'm going to concentrate my efforts there. If you want to concentrate elsewhere, that's where you get to be unique. You may see other numbers like, oh, my God, Edmonton's scoring like bosses right now. Go for it. Stack them up. Like Vancouver last night, you might kick my ass in tournaments. Go for it. I'm banking on the fact that over the course of a season, I'm going to be there more often than you. That's all I'm banking on. So, Toronto, uh, you know, you're line one, line two guys. Pittsburgh, line one, line two guys. Washington, power play one, power play two. Notice Ovechkin's on both. He correlates with Wilson, Eller, uh, Verana, and Orlov, just like he correlates with Baxter, Moshi, Carlson, and Kuznetsov. You know, if you wanted to throw Kuznetsov over here with Wilson and Eller, he correlates with them too. You can mix and match these. You find this out by studying the lines. You go to like a dailyfaceoff.com or somewhere that shows you all of those lines, and you can simply use that. Landis Cog, McKinnon, Rattan, and Kadri, McCarr, this top line, there's the second power play line. Carolina, this is about the only line I would stack out of Carolina right now. It's their, I think it's their third line, but it's also their top power play line. Zingle, Hala, Svechnikov, Hamilton, Teravainen. Yeah, you could throw some Aho in there. Yeah, you could throw some Niederreiter in there. You could do some things, but generally speaking, that's the stack I'm running. Meyer, Couture, Marlowe, Burns, and then Burns is on both for me because he's a very high floor defenseman. If I wanted to run these stacks, Kane, Hurdle, LeBanc, Burns is going to correlate with them because he's not going to only be on the ice with the top guys. He's going to overlap some. And he generates offense. If I look at my money savers, Dumoulin, Pedersen, Graves, Holzer, Really cheap guys that are actually got some activity going for shots and blocked shots to create some form of a floor. If you get lucky and they put, uh, you know, an assist or a goal on the board, good for you. But they at least don't give you an automatic zero, which is all we're trying to do with these money savers. And you might need some of those punts tonight. You might not. I don't know. But I would go into the domination station and I would make sure that those guys are checked in my player pool. My other one-offs from around the league that are not either in a stack or not on these teams, uh, uh, Marner for uh, Toronto, I don't know why he's not in here, but he didn't really correlate when I was looking at stuff, so I put him in there as a one-off. Uh, Slavin Pesky, Eric Carlson, uh, James Neal, of course, a lot of these Edmonton guys. Again, justifies an Edmonton stack if you want to run one. McDavid, Eichel, Dreisaitl, Clefbaum, uh, Skinner, Couturier, Nurse, Henrik, Tyler Sagan. These are the guys that are shooting. Where am I finding this? I go into the research station over at uh, dfsarmy.com. It's one of the tools that we use, and I sort this bad boy out. I go over here to the last five games section under the skaters tab. I sort shots on goal by block shots or shots on goal plus block shots. I put a custom filter on there over 15, greater than or equal to 15. Anyone that's not shooting 15 shots on goal or block shots over their last five games isn't active enough for me to really worry about. And then I put a filter on this uh, shot percentage of over 10%. So I've got guys that are scoring some goals right now, getting some results. There's a lot of luck in this number right here, but generally speaking, those that shoot with a bunch of accuracy and pump a bunch of shots on goal get good results. Duh. Not exactly rocket science. I sorted by FanDuel average. I could have sorted by DraftKings average, I guess. It ought to come out to about the same. But when I scroll back over, so I've got it sorted by fantasy points per last five games average. I've got it filtered off to 15 shots on goal or block shots or better and a 10% shooting accuracy. And this is the player pool that I got for my one-offs. Again, not rocket science. Is it perfect? No. You could probably build a better filter. Go for it. Do what you want to do. You need access to it by being a VIP over at DFSArmy.com, though. 
I'm going to look at the salaries here, and my cheap one-offs would be, you know, Burakovsky, but he's already in the Washington stack, or the Colorado stack, I'm sorry. Uh, down here a little bit more, 3,900, Ashton Reese is already in the Pittsburgh stack. Got bumped to the power play one line, right? Uh, Jake Muzzin, already in the Toronto stack. Ryan Graves, probably a one-off. Bouchard, probably a one-off. If he plays, this double X means he's not on a line. He's not in a power play. He's not playing right now. Don't know if he's hurt. Don't know what's up. But I'd be watching for him to pop into the lineup. If he does, I'd probably play him. Obviously, if not, I'd filter him right out. And Holzer in Anaheim It's another cheap one that's producing some activity. If you scroll over here to the very, very bottom, back to the last five. 8.5 average, 19 shots on goal and block shots, and he's putting a couple of shots in the net. Good for him. Maybe this is all his points are. And so when this fades away over the next five games, if this goal falls off, then guess what? He won't be on my list anymore. But until that point, he's going to stay on my list. If he's on my list, I use him. If he's not on my list, I don't. Again, not rocket science. But there's my one-off list, and then those are my stacks. So now you basically see how I do things. And I do it every single day. And I go into the Domination Station. Now I set my stacks. If you're a VIP, you get to see those videos. I'll show you how I set up Domination Station. I uh, probably won't do that every day, but I will do that quite a bit. And that way guys understand what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and getting results. And it's just simple. You can use these MME contests as grinding for cash if you want to. Um, it takes going for some gusto, though. It does take some Vancouver. It does take getting to the top of those leaderboards and driving those lineups in deep. But I would send a block after it. I would send in, you know, say, eight stacks of Toronto 1 and then eight stacks of Toronto 2 and then eight stacks of Pittsburgh and eight of Washington and, you know, six of Colorado and five of Carolina because I feel like Carolina's on the back-to-back -back and they're traveling and they might be a little tired, but I want some exposure to them. And 10 lineups of San Jose because if Carolina falls apart, San Jose might score a lot of goals tonight. And if that happens and San Jose goes through, then my 10 lineups in that stack are set up really, really well. It's just a matter of what I stacked with them and what I was able to pull off as to how many of those get across the money line. If San Jose, Colorado, and Pittsburgh all go off tonight, and I've got three sets of those stack, three blocks of those stacks going through, then I should be set up pretty well to get something fairly deep, but quite a few across the cash line, and maybe I grind up a little bit. I don't mind, like I said, putting in 20 bucks and getting back 10 bucks. I can live on 10 bucks a night losses because when I hit, I'm going to win money back. That's going to ultimately make up for that, and that's all I'm trying to do. And if you want to use this in three lineups and use one Toronto lineup, one Washington lineup, one Carolina lineup, and just use three lineups and run 50-50s uh, and double-ups and triple-ups and 10-man leagues and 20-man leagues and 100-man leagues and all that stuff, do it. It's what it's designed to do. Get good at building lineups. And my motto now is becoming get good at getting close. If you get into those GPPs and you get good at getting close, you will eventually pop one. That I can promise you. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take. It might take a year. It might take two years. I don't know. But you'll eventually pop one. Anyway, this has been Chopadong. This is NHL Super Quick Breakdown for tonight, uh, October 16th. If you like the videos, like and subscribe down there below. Ring the notification bell so these videos drop to your phone. We're going to come back later. We're going to do a little bit of NFL Week 7, box checkers. We'll start that up. And then consider becoming a VIP at DFSArmy.com. Use the coupon code DFSArmy or CHOP, C-H-O-P. Get that 20% off discount. Get in here, start asking the questions that we're starting to assess and we're starting to set up Domination Station and we're passing all of our knowledge on to you. And we can talk about strategy and we can talk about contrarian versus chalky versus this versus that, how to run MME, how to run the Domination Station, how to run single entry, how to run cash. We can talk about all that stuff. If you're looking to take your game to the next level, whether it be hockey, football, baseball, basketball, PGA, NASCAR, whatever, we've got the coaches in place to help you do that. And every single sport's included for one single VIP membership. We don't charge you by the sport. We unlock. Once you come in, we unlock everything to you. Very, very simple concept. Once again, and then when tournaments come along, remember, get good at getting close. All right. Peace out, guys. We'll see you later.